Just Shopping podcast. And today we have from the Dust Coder, Adam Mackey. He's a real rock and roller. And also my cousin, David. He's sitting in a corner in his bedroom. We seem to have a bit of a bedroom theme going on lately. We recorded Sean Smith and uh, recently, and he was sat in his brother's bedroom, he said. I think it was his own bedroom. But... Um, well, I can confirm I'm in my bedroom, boys. I'm on the <laughs> other side. So uh, what can I say? True to form, but um, uh, lovely to meet you both, and thank you both very much for having me. It's great to be here. That's great, man. It's a pleasure to get you on the podcast. Excellent. Yeah, well, I, I first come across you in 2017. It was actually before you released your first album. Yeah. Um, I'm, a, I'm a massive Toby Jepsen fan, so um, obviously his new band, The Wayward Sons, were coming out. And he was being interviewed on something. I can't remember. One of the questions was, what bands are you listening to at the moment? And which ones do you think are sounding good? And he actually mentioned the Dust Coda. So did he? I, he did. And that's why I checked you guys out as a result of Toby saying, check these guys out. They're really good. And a lot of the Wayward Sons fans all checked you out as well. So um, I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a I lovely story. Yeah. I can't remember what interview it was, but... Um, or who interviewed him, but we were all at Steelhouse then in 2018 talking. I know if you remember, the weather was absolutely horrendous. I, I, I do remember the weather yeah. being bad, funnily enough. Yeah. Yes. And we didn't even know if you guys were getting on. So I was kind of like, when I go to a festival, I tick off the bands I really, really want to watch. And it was you guys and those damn crows uh, were on that day. And I remember it was really, really bad weather. And the first band got cancelled. And I was thinking, Oh shit, we're not going to be able to see these guys. But thankfully, they managed to get the electricity back working. And um, I think you guys might have been the first band on on that Sunday morning, actually. We were. So I don't want to hog how you want to do this, but I'll quickly tell you the story of that because it's brilliant. So we obviously were based in London. So we we drove, drove up the night before um, so we could stay over. And then we were on early the next day. Um, and the night before was brilliant because uh, first of all, Miles Kennedy, yeah. And that first that, that first solo album was stunning. I loved it, so I got to see him, which was fantastic. And then I think it was um it was Glenn Hughes, um, yeah. which is just good fun, right? Uh, live at the end, so it was great. Um, but then the next day, the heavens opened and all this jazz, and we basically get there, and Max and Mikey, who run run the festival. They're just neck deep in it. There, there was a certain atmosphere backstage, which was very different to the night before, and a lot of people had started leaving. Mm. And they were very upfront with us. They were like, we're not sure mm. if it's going to happen or not, boys. Just bear with us and sit tight. And at this point, then the Dead Daisies weren't going to make it, um, and the choir boys, um, well, I'll tell you about them, but they didn't make it. Mm. And, you know, we... Being back, so we could see it all unfold and it was pissing it down and everyone was scratching their heads a bit. And if you weren't scratching your head, someone had one of those rubber brooms and they were just shifting rain off somewhere. And long story short, bless them, Mikey was like, I'm really sorry, but it, it's not going to happen. You know, it's just not going to happen. And and we were like, look, you know, we're not going to kick off. But, you know, we can see you're in, you're in a tight spot here. Blah, blah, blah. And, and I think at the time... We did, did. We all got back in the van and did the quick maths. And this is about half ten in the morning or something. I'm like, well, to be honest, I'll be in the pub by half. You know, it's still in time for a Sunday lunch, right? Let's just let's just put the foot down and get there. And it's miserable. And there's all these other bands turning up to play later, and might, same might happen to them. So you know, this we can be back in London in four hours would be grand. We got about five because you, you drive down the mountains, yeah. winding road, and we got about three minutes down the road. And you're driving slowly. All of a sudden, this Land Rover speeds past us and pulls up, and it's and it and it's Mikey winds his window down. And he goes, "Quiet boys are stuck in Frankfurt. They've cancelled. You're back on." So we ended up doing. So we basically did a Yui. We we literally just got our heads around. Oh, it'd be all right. And obviously, it was amazing. But I won't lie, there was this unsaid kind of feeling in the van when it turns out. Oh shit, do we have to. <laughs> we, <laughs> just, we just we just got used to the idea of going back to be honest but, but obviously we're glad we did and it was great we turned around and went up and 
it was, you know, it's our first steel house experience. You wouldn't change it because it wasn't one of those new, unique years. It was pissing mm. it down. Um, there was like a hardcore kind of hundred in there, in their different different waterproof stuff kind of seeing us and, get, and sticking through it and and it was great you know it was something different yeah. it was wet we had a laugh yeah well, I, I was really lucky because me and the missus we, the first year we went up in 2016 we did camping camping and all we did <laughs> i was dragging all the stuff back and forth and we were arguing all the time so ever since then we've glamped so i remember getting up the sunday morning and we it, it, it had been really raining hard. The wind was really bad. And all we could hear, to be fair, they did a great job with the glamping kids. They were young kids. They were going around hitting the tent pegs back in. So when we got up in the morning, the, the other campsite was directly behind us. And I looked at the campsite and it looked like a tornado had gone through it. There was tents thrown up everywhere. There were people, like I said, packing up. But most people just left their tents in. So I, I don't know how many tents they had at the end of that festival, but obviously they were dragging them all together and put them in a skip but like you said yeah it was, I, I think there was a bit more than a hundred there but uh, there were not that many of us unfortunately yeah, it, it wasn't it, there were more people in the beer tent because it was covered yeah, that's right. and the beer yeah. tent isn't that's as right. big as the main arena right yeah so I remember that quite vividly yeah. as oh the beer's good this year yeah um, but you know I, but it was it was great to see it a couple of weeks going off you know in a merry way because a after the year everyone's had so let's put it back on and the weather was good and all the footage looked great everyone's yeah. having a good time so that, that was really good to see yeah it was good it was good yeah oh, yeah cool man good stories <laughs> so you were formed in 2013 then adam uh I, yeah yeah rough like it's been a while so i think that's pretty accurate um and to dave's point of like discovery in 2017 so obviously that that's when the debut came out we actually made it end of 2015 beginning 2016 and when you're when you're unsigned um or not I've, I've, oh, sorry, two things when you're unsigned and it's your first album there's two reasons of why not to know what to do with it so we just sat on it for ages and, and bided our time um so the band that lineup really um in 2013 our main objective was like right we're gonna write an album make it and then if we like it we're gonna give us a good crack and um yeah most of us are still here giving it a good crack basically <laughs> so yeah along yeah. nicely yeah i mean your, your new album was just come out in what was it in march or may was it? yeah it was end of march end of march, march yeah. yeah 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 and then were you signed to eric before that or is that no so that that was another that was a good um kind of coming together of, of of the cosmos um so we we made mojo skyline the second album we made that off our own back again and we just did what we did before with just a bit more money in the kitty off the back of the first album and we did it with clint murphy our same producer in the same studio and we knew we just wanted to make something a bit bigger so just you know two more tracks and bit bigger in sound and all that jazz and and long story short we met earache doing the new wave of rock and roll compilation album which they did early 29 early 2020 mm -hmm. came out in february 2020 um and we played and here's here's a good rock and roll story for you they did the launch show in islington academy london and they had five bands down to play that show and we weren't one of them originally. Um, and I won't tell you the name of the band because they might get, you know, <laughs> damn it, damn it, like type of thing. But a very good band. I like them. They're one of the ones I like and rate. Um, pulled out and we got the call about three weeks before the gig because they're like, oh, you're London based and blah, blah, blah. I remember it was Tom from the label rang me. And I was like, yeah, cool, we'll do it. So that's how short notice we got the call for that gig. We did the show. Um, you know, with a host of other great bands that night. Um, and long story short, we obviously did what we do best and very well. And it was lots of beer chat at the bar. There was a guy called Lewis who joined the label at that time. Um, he basically approached us and was like, so you're not signed? And we're like, no. And, we're, and you've got a new album? Yes. And 
we literally fair play to them because I was conscious that it was you know beer talk yeah, at yeah. the bar after a gig type thing. So yeah, yeah, of course you're going to blah 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 whatever. Um, they got in touch that week and said you know we'd like to hear the new album, and luckily we weren't beer talk. We we'd made it. We had it. So we had the the WAVs, the mix WAVs. It hadn't been mastered, but the mix, and we sent it to them. And then within a week, they were like, yeah, we want to sign you. And then that began the process of negotiation and all, and all that jazz. So it's, um, so it's pretty cool, all those things combining. Because we were prepared because we had the album, we had mm-hmm. the product. So that was great. Um, and then there was that lovely story around the gig. And then if you think about the timing, that show was literally two weeks before Boris told us all to stay at home for a bit. Mm. Um, so equally, you know, a lot of people at the moment, they reflect on last year and all this stuff. We were, we were kind of playing dumb and going, yeah, yeah, you know, we'll get through it. But actually the first six months, it was great. Cause we were just, we were, you know, negotiating a record deal, the label, the publishing deal and getting signed and, and hatching plans and all that jazz. So, yes. um, we were very lucky and very humbled, but, um, everything kind of fell together nicely. Yeah, very good. I mean, yeah, because I was wondering because you, like you said, you had the album already made, so I was wondering if it was just a like a distribution deal or. So yeah, we hadn't, we hadn't, we'd only released, I think, at that point, one or two songs. Um. So yeah, we hadn't released the album until we didn't have a plan. We we were actually, we we're actually fishing round with another uh, label. It was actually one of the major labels who wanted to do a publishing deal with us. Um, which is very different to yeah. record deal. Um, but then when Earache came in, it, you know, it just seems like a perfect fit for a band our size and the music we do and the label like Earache and their legacy. And um, I don't know if you guys have ever chatted to Digby, but, you know, Digby, who, who owns the label, you know, he lives and breathes it. He really does. Um, so have someone like him phoning in your corner is amazing. Um, and yeah, it, it was the perfect fit for everyone at the time. And um uh, hopefully we've uh, we've done each other proud and you know we'll continue to do so. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a great album. I mean, yeah, it is. It's a great year, so yeah, it's stuff. Class, absolute class. And Limbo Man has had a million down. Oh, million. Has has it? Who Nick. are they? Yeah. Who are they? <laughs> um, but that again, that so that is another great example of our learning curve of now being the label. Because so Digby picked that as the first single. Okay. And we're, and I was like, really? Really? It's a bit, you know, I love all the songs, don't get me wrong. But, you know, musically, and I probably shouldn't say this, but sod it. You know, I'm a bit like, well, it's a bit, you know, it's a bit kind of Metallica paint my numbers in bits, right? It's not the most original stuff we've ever written. And original yeah. stuff's hard in rock and roll, don't get me wrong. But, um, but it, but it's got, you know, there is something about it that's really blossomed and grown on me. And I was like, I kind of get it. And I remember when we recorded it and we were very good with Clint. We were like, it's got to sound like Metallica, but played by the struts. Okay. And what we, and what we mean by that is we're not going to put on six guitars in each channel to do the, the, the you know, the chug. It's got to have a bit of a twang, got to have a bit of character to it, a bit of soul and groove. Um, and we pull it off. And that fair play to Digby, you heard something in it. And mm. um, yeah, to your point, it's um, it's hit a million streams in whatever it is, about six months or, oh no, no, God, no, a lot longer than that, but um, less it's than a year. not that long, is it? No, yeah, well that, that, well, that one came out in November. Oh, right, okay. It was the first single, that's what I mean. Yeah. So that, that, yeah, that yeah. goes back to then, because yeah. um, it was the first one. Um, but yeah, it's done well, and the video's smashing it as well. Um, and yeah, love it. Yeah, that's good stuff, isn't it? Yeah, because I've, I've been having a listen again today. So the, the Jimmy Two Times, yeah, that's, um, that's based on a character out of the Goodfellas movie. It is. So that, that's one of John's babies and quite, and, and that's, that's one of the first, he had that written pretty much before we met. Okay. So we're talking pre-album one and he had this great idea. So we, we, we were mucking about with it um before the band was formed uh it didn't make the cut for album one for whatever reason and always wanted to revisit it and it was a lovely example of look we've got a bit more time and money that song needs other instruments Mm. 
and we did it and it's like yeah now it now it's that thing um uh and it sounds bloody great with the horns yeah, the last, and the piano and stuff is, yeah that's, yeah it's I great they were tracks yeah it's a great it's a really really good track that one because i was i was because i said terry about it i've been listening to the, the music again and it was kind of like demon come on oh it's a class song breakdown come on oh it's a really good song <laughs> i've just gone through them all so i thought oh, i'll sit down with um with adam now and i'll, I'll tell him which ones are my favorite songs but when you go through the album, it's such a strong album. It's really hard to kind of like put out a favorite song, if you know what I mean. Oh, but that, that's great. Um, I think it's things like this. And obviously we did a lot of PR and interviews around the actual album during the campaign. And I think one of the things I, I loved about that, and to your point, and that I was a bit like, great, people are getting it, is I, you know, an album is a piece of work. And the arrangement and ordering of the album is so important because I'm a big believer in light and shade. You want to tell a story, you know, you, you don't, there's a lot of bands out there that, you know, some, and they're, you know, they're great, but a lot of it can sound the same mm -hmm. and you can then get lost. You know, each song should have its identity and flow. And then you, you feel, you feel like you've gone on this journey within the album as an, as an entirety, as well as having, you know, your go-to favorite ones. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, you know, I remember, you know, I'm not as not as young as I used to be, and but I'm, you know, growing up, it was all about albums, and I loved it, and I, I could tell at a young age, I was like a good album versus a bad, bad album, not just because of the first two singles and how big they were, otherwise they jumped out too much, and you know, mm -hmm. you know, we all grew up with ugly words like album fillers and things like that. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, we we're, we're particularly proud of that. Um, it was something we put a lot of time and effort into because, um, you know, there's a lot more to the kind of songwriting that we do as opposed to just being really loud. Mm. So, so yeah, glad you're enjoying it. Yeah, it's I, great. Really good. So I where did you pull the name from then, uh, Adam? Dust Coder. Uh, Oh, the dust code. Well, firstly, as I'm sure you'll agree, like getting a band name is one of the hardest bloody things in the world. Like we, we, we were probably a thing for about two years before we thought, oh, shit, we've got to get a name. Um, so uh, the dust resonates with that kind of, you know, Route 66 biker dust, you know, not, not back of the sofa or anything like that. I was going to say, is it the uh, it's, not, it's not Dyson uh, <laughs> dust. It's, it's that Route 66, you know, four to the floor wind in your hair and it's that kind of rock and roll imagery of of not caring but keeping going and with that code and this is where it gets a bit anal coda is in musical transcripts um you get repeat passages now and again like repeat symbol for a couple of bars or a bar and the symbol at the end of a repeat passage is called a coda so okay. italian transcript and translated it means uh, completion end of repeating so our thing is like, well, we're, you know, we're, we're not reinventing rock and roll. We know that. You just need to listen to it. But we're keeping it going. In these modern times with the same energy, you know, we're paying, without doubt, we're paying tribute to the most amazing influences, which are obvious in our music. And that's, you know, Led Zeppelin, Guns N' Roses, ACDC, Stones, etc. But we're keeping it going in our own way uh, that we're very proud of. And that, you know, and that's very important in this day and age, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think David was just going to ask you where you get your influences from then. Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, I thought you were, yeah. You <laughs> just answered it in one question, really. Yeah. Yeah, because it is, it is very rock and roll. I mean, that album is big guitar riffs and, yeah, you know, heavy vocals. And I mean, even your, even your photos are like leather jackets and, you know, slip back hair. I mean, it's nice to see a rock and roll band looking like a rock and roll band. Yeah. You um, know? Couldn't agree more. It's um, yeah, it's 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 a kind of classic rock album that's fit for the modern era. But again, what I like about it is um, a lot of those songs are classic. Mm. They could get played in twenty years' time. They could have got played twenty years ago. Yeah, yeah. just you know, they're not. It's not trying to be too pigeonholed or or clever or modern. And because you can you can you, you can get forgotten quite quickly with music. So we're, you know, we're very proud of the stuff that influences us and and how we deliver it. Basically, with our own sneaky pinch of something that's a bit modern. Like you can get very into the production. Some of the stuff Clint does is really quite cool. 
and that's how he just makes it sound big um because we are only four dudes at the end of the day yeah yeah but um but the, you know the influence question um it's fairly apparent you know we've got the big old school classic rock names which very much inspire us but then all four of us have then our own kind of background and musical journey we've been on and a lot of that will I think the good thing about the band is we we kind of tick everyone's boxes off by delivering what we do anyway so if, you know we'll go a little bit heavy sometimes equally we'll pull back and be a bit more melodic sometimes we'll be quick we'll be slow blah 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 you know there's a bit bit for everyone yeah, right. cool. Yeah, because Adam, uh, Adam, or Adam, John Drake, he's Australian. Yeah, um, he's been in the UK, I think, about 15 years now, but he was a Brisbane boy. So oh, probably, right, okay, because I was going to ask how he ended up in the UK, so. Yeah, a long time ago. Um, so, yeah, just moved over here uh, when he was young to, probably, you know, probably he'll tell you he had a guitar on his back and wanted to follow his dream of trying to crack the music industry or something like that. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Typical Ed for London and... Yeah, you know, that jazz big city lights, and uh, yeah, yeah, does that still work? Well, it has, <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> We're getting it. it's been a long time coming. We're getting there, we're getting yeah. there. He hasn't gone home yet, <laughs> so something's not that bad. On. Yeah, just about, just about, just <laughs> about, yeah, because he's you, when you listen to his vocals, he's got to have one of the best voices out there at the moment. Yeah, his vocals are. And his range is is incredible. It's, oh, it's, it's insane. I was I was singing along to something earlier on before. Well, I, I logged on a bit earlier before Terry, and I, I was still listening to the music, and I was walking back and forth checking to see if Terry had joined. And I was singing along, and I was thinking, "Fucking, I'll murder in this song here," because I just I cannot get anywhere near the, the you know the, the I don't know what you call it the pitch is it or the level that he's getting to. It's incredible. The, you know the range he's got is unbelievable. Oh, I've definitely. Um, you know, it's he's a mixture of 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 a great singer, but it's all it's it's like having an extra instrument because mm. it's so yeah, fast, yeah. so and strong. You know, because he'll 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 not only sing the song, but then he'll add, you know, these powerful moments. And like I said, it's just it's a whole another instrument in itself. Yeah. Mm. Um, and it's and you know, it's just part of the chemistry that makes what we are. Because when we were writing back in in the good old days, it. Would, you know, kind of my very kind of blues rock inspired stuff that he was very much this kind of more folky singer songwriter wanting to make it. Um, you know, yeah, he won't mind me saying it'd be like free chords and he'd be crying over a girl type thing. Um, but then, but he would never sing like that mm. on that stuff. As soon as we, you know, we started writing, all of a sudden he was like, shit, like, yeah be more Axl Rose right it just you know he had this platform to go for it and he and he was enjoying it and he was almost discovering a new lease of life to his voice and this is a long time ago um and he hasn't hasn't held him back since um which is great yeah has he had any sort of training or um no um but he's in more recently over the years he's kind of explored professional ways of how to look after it Okay. Because yeah. to you know, to your point, imagine singing that every night for a few. You know, if you're on tour and stuff, mm. um, you got to be sensible. Um, but with with that kind of uh, how to manage it and look after it, um, he's in touch with these you know professional coaches who also give him tips and training now that you know we're, we're all moving on to you know another level. Yeah. So yeah. I say he's kind of the talent. The talent's there. And it hasn't gone, and it was a raw talent. But he's learning more about how to look after it and use it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, cool. What about yourself with the guitar? When did you start playing that? Gosh, uh, I started playing properly, and I had lessons when I was about ten, and it was classical to start with. Um, and then I picked up the electric when I was about fourteen, I think, thirteen, fourteen. So yeah, um, I. I I fell in love with the guitar when I was seven or eight years old. My parents took my um, brother to on a night out and I had a babysitter. And the next day I was just being chirpy, like, where have you all been? Blah, blah, blah. And my parents were like, well, we went to see, went to the Royal Albert Hall. I went to saw someone called Eric Clapton. I was like, who, who's this Eric? Who, what the hell's that? And I'll never forget, 
um we got on the car later that day and had the cassette and this and this dates how old i am um, but it was a journeyman album and put the cassette in and i'll never forget when i first heard track three bad love yeah it starts yeah. with this riff yeah and i was like okay and i was like what's that and I'm like, well, that's the electric guitar i was like well how do i get that <laughs> how, do, how do i do that uh, and that was the beginning just completely fell in love with it yes. and um haven't stopped since so your parents were very well they, they were, enjoyed uh, a lot of music then uh yeah good fans yeah so they weren't yeah. musical they didn't okay. they didn't play um but they had good taste in music um, okay and so I, I grew up around cool music of that era so just being a kid in the car in the 80s um what i mean by good music is in the good bands at the time so things like um eric but there would be like omd tears for fears um simply red like early simply red was good yeah so yeah, early simply red, not, yeah you know those first two albums are great no but the musicianship was amazing right yeah, so yeah, all, yeah, all, yeah. and and in terms of pop bands tears for fears own, own, they, you know they were great yeah the albums like the melodies the, the structure and everything um and then a lot of the classic stuff through my dad so you know got to hear led zeppelin hendrix free and all these great bands um, yeah, yeah and cream you know, yeah. went back to the beginning of it, discovered Cream. I was like, wow. Um, so, yeah, it was very cool. So are your parents still alive or not? Yeah, yeah, still alive and kicking. Um, cool. So so all good. So what do you think? Are they at the front row when you're doing your gigs? or? Um, my, dad, my dad loves it. Yeah. You know, he's, he's got the glint. He's, like, he's kind of followed the journey and, and loves it. Um, and he, he gets it because he can hear... I think he finds it a bit too heavy because it's not clean enough for him, but he can hear that 70s influence. Okay. So, some of the, so some of the songs he loves, he loves the whole thing, but some of the songs he loves more than others. Um, my mum, bless her, will always say she loves it. She doesn't have a clue. What more can man. you ask for? Exactly. What <laughs> more can it, you yeah. ask for? Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it must, be, it must be proud times, you know, when, when obviously they got your first instrument and then however many years later you release your first album it must be uh, it must be really good for them oh yeah but mum you know I'm, I'm not getting any younger as I said but you know my mum will still probably bollock me if she knew how much guitars cost it's not, it's not your money you didn't earn it and you don't bollock me anymore so, so there's uh, David gets it, but I know what you mean I know what you mean know David you mean. gets enough bollockings of his wife about guitar prices yeah and I can't play and I still buy <laughs> he still buys a maker <laughs> It's just got to be done, isn't it? Yeah, like, absolutely. Right? Yeah, done for what's, what's your go-to guitar then? So I'm um I'm a Les Paul man, very much. Um, and they haven't got cheaper. I can tell you mm. that much. Um, and a lot of that was just that early influence of you know Jimmy Page and Slash. But then my my first ever guitar was electric. Was a black Epiphone Les Paul. Um, based on those influences. But I loved it, and that, that's how. I and so I, 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 through that, I stick with Gibson. So I'm, I'm, I'm partial to a, uh, a, a Firebird or a Flying V now and again. But Les Pauls are my main thing, um, and I'm lucky to have picked up some good ones. So all the recording and live playing mm. is, is always with those guys. And yeah. Absolutely love them. Absolutely love them. Yeah, it's a nice and it's, it's 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 a good and sorry it was it's a good part of our sound as well because unintentionally we realized it worked and it's that whole light and shade thing again because john uses single coils and kind of uh tele based fenders um so he had a fender thin line which is basically basically a telly yeah. and he's got a new uh guitar which is it's a fender but we, we don't really know what it is but it's pretty cool um looks like it's got humbuckers but actually twin uh, single cores you can switch between but so he's got that cleaner ringer ring and sparse when he's playing the chords and everything but then i've got the weight of the les paul so the riffs and the lead work cuts so we, do, we don't fight we don't clash yeah yeah which is again sometimes you can hear that with bands because everyone's been like no but i can't hear me and it's like oh but actually we don't need to because mm. music it just works wonderfully which yeah, is really yeah, nice. Yeah, different and, tones. And, and is is important, I think. In a, yeah, yeah. You know, just to be a bit classy about it. It, it makes such a big difference sonically, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I never really thought about that before, to be honest. 
because both of my uh, in in the one band that I used to have, yeah, you know, they, they both played fucking telly. So like the the rhythm guitar played a telly, and then the lead guitar played a telly, and I, this... and we were always fucking around with amps, but we never actually thought about changing the guitar. That best example, Guns and Roses, mm. is yeah. in Slash. You can hear them. You know, Slash has got a massive sound. But you can yeah. always hear Izzy, nice and clean, yeah, yeah. doing his thing. And the two, yeah, I mean, the mixing was wonderful anyway, but you can just hear them both. They don't fight for each other. And it's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, fucking hell. I must have tricked it. <laughs> <laughs> As usual. <laughs> oh, you'll, you'll look next time, no, will you? Yeah, yeah, fuck that. I'm not getting back into that nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. Fucking band management did my head in. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, sorry, Dave. I was going to say, your first album then came out in 2007. 17. 17, sorry. Yeah, yeah. And this, this again, has some massive tracks on it as well. And I mean, Sweet Love is uh, is just hell of a tune. That's, that's yeah. something that's, like you said, you know, people are going to be listening to that for 20, 30, 40 years' time. It's, it's an amazing track, that is. That's, that was the one I murdered earlier. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's, you can't not sing to it, right? No. That it's lyric, you, just, you just want to. And that, um, in a mo- it's weird, like Mojo Skyline, is incredible, but I think I'll never, I'll always be more proud at the moment. I'll always be more proud of a debut, I think, if I'm honest. Okay, because it started the whole thing. I just think, I think there's more. I know just everything about it's bloody brilliant the rawness of it, but it's not too raw, you know, it's professional enough that it can carry. Um, the songwriting is insane, like Will I Ever at the end, it's, you know, for, for an unsigned, unknown band to pull off a song like that, I think it's amazing. Uh, and John's vocals are just, you know, biblical. Um, yeah, just all, I just, and a lot of those songs were stuff I wrote like in my early 20s. They always just hang around, hung around until I knew I was going to be in such a band that could pull off these type of things. I just think, yeah, I, I love that album to bits. Mm. Always oh, was. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah. So, so I've seen you guys twice now because I saw you at Rockstock as well. Nice. So I was, I keep telling Terry it was last year, but obviously it was 2019, wasn't it? Uh, it wasn't last year because last year was fucked. 2020, yeah. 2020. On the main, when we, we did the main station. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And uh, like what you said, where you said, um, after, excuse me, I can't remember his name, but you said like your producer manages to make a big sound. You guys were still making that sound live anyway. So, you know, when I've seen you, when I've seen you at Steelhouse and at, Planet rock stock, you know, the, the big sound is still it, even though, like you said, it's just a four piece. So, um, yeah, it's really, really good stuff, man. Really good. Nah, stuff. That's cool. That's cool. Um, and Sweet Love was the first song we wrote together. Was it really? Yeah, that's where it all started. And and it's brilliant because I bet, like, the original kind of dem- is in like mobile phone kind of sketches we did. Oh, fuck me. It was about 12 minutes long. Like, we both had guitar solos and all this crap. Because <laughs> it's still a long song, but it, it works now. Yeah. Um, but if you, if you love that, you should check out. It's on Spotify. One of the first releases we did is part of the More It Fades single. There's a live version of that. Okay. And it's like, it's quite, yeah, it's it's um, the yellow Dust Coda label, More It Fades uh, single release. There's an acoustic version of Fades and there's a live version of Sweet Love. Controversial. And I'll let you decide. Live version's pretty bloody good. Okay. <laughs> pretty bloody good. Like, How long is say, it? Same, same length. Oh, okay. But in terms of rawness and delivery, you're a bit like, oh, you know, just saying. Um, but you were, might be you going think. into a free bird moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. The like, yeah, the 20 minute live version. Yeah. No, they wouldn't let us. No one would let us. I wanted to. Um, God, that'd be great. Um but yeah, have have a listen, see what we think. But it's um, you know, um, uh, Guy Bellamy and Great Music Stories, his radio show. Yeah, because yeah. he 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 was part of the journey, and they 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 got into us very early days. Um, it was off the back of that. That's all he would play for a bit. Was that live okay. version? Yeah. Oh, cool. It's um, it's raw and it's it's very good, very good. Cool. Yeah, you've been lucky enough to be championed by a couple of radio stations, really, like Planet Rock and. Yeah, I mean. You know, Planet Rock we were there from the beginning, which is great. Um, when we first released More It Fades, and that was just doing the old-fashioned thing of um, emailing Wyatt, and yeah, he got yeah. got involved with it. And 
you know, they're, they're really supportive and good because, you know, they, they've seen us grow and on this journey. And, you know, it's, it's one of those lovely things. You kind of go from the, you know, you use the, the festivals they do as a good barometer, right? You, you kind of, so I remember when we, when they just wanted to, we didn't even apply for it. It was just brilliant. It was bizarre when we did the first rock stock on the smaller stage and we were like on in the morning on the Saturday. And I was like, have we got this? It's brilliant, brilliant. But that really propelled things. That was mm-hmm. such a ladder because people got in touch with us about stuff, blah, blah, blah. That's how we got Steel House because we met them and they saw us. Um, and then, you know, you can see yourself working your way up. And then, you know, as we mentioned, main stage and, you know, we're talking about next year and we'll see what slots we get, but it, it's, it's all great and growth. And then, yeah, the radio side of things, um, Jimmy two times mentioned earlier, mm. that was, that was a listed for about 10 weeks. Mm. It's brilliant. Yeah. They just, they just kept playing it. They loved it. So yeah. it's all these things. Yeah. yeah. Kicking ass. Trying. Basically. Yeah. So what's the biggest stage you played on then so far? We d- biggest stage we've done, which was brilliant. We did uh Brewdog, their AGM. Okay. Uh, annual general meeting, which is, as you can imagine, a massive piss up <laughs> yeah. up in uh, Aberdeen. So it's Aberdeen Arena, which is the second largest indoor venue in the UK. So it's okay. over ten it's over ten thousand people. Um, and we were on just before Maximo Park. Um, and this isn't 10,000 normal people. It's 10,000 people who've had eight hours of beer in them. Yeah, yeah. Um, we had a lot of beer as well. Um, so um, I, think we, I think everyone had a lovely time. That's the main thing. Um, <laughs> but it was, it was, it was great because it was like, it was just huge. Mm. It's great you know the sound was insane it was brilliant um yeah that 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 stood out that was an absolute belter um it's a shame because we were going to do main stage rambling fair this summer but obviously that got canned um but we've got we've got plenty to look forward to next summer um Oh yeah, one of them has been announced, which would be brilliant. We're doing this, we're doing this festival in Spain called Rock Imperium, and it's got White Snake, Scorpions, and Black Label Society. Okay, name, really, and it's like you know, and it's in this old um, Roman amphitheater type venue on the southern coast of Spain. That's mm. bloody brilliant. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, can't wait. Yeah, that'd be cool. One, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. like a full weekend festival as well, is it? Yeah, yeah. We're we're just doing a Saturday top of my head, so we'll. We'll dip in and out. Um, but, yeah, can't wait. You're going in the van, are you? No, nah, we'll, we'll fly to that one. I was going to say, you could pick me up on the way through. <laughs> yeah, um, I jump in and you can drop me off on the way home. <laughs> no, exactly. Well, we've got, as, as, as I mentioned before we pressed the button, we've got, um, we're driving to Europe the 1st of October. So we're playing... Then Bosch and Holland on the first. Then we're playing Frankfurt on the Saturday. Then we've got a gig in Bonn for Rock Palatz, the German TV show. Okay. On on the Monday, which should be brilliant. So in terms of size, that should that should be pretty tasty because mm. they um it goes out to a very wide audience. Um, I've no idea how many people are in. That you know, if, it's very COVID safe and all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'd be interesting to see how many people are in the live audience, but good coverage so yeah you are, you'll have to uh, make sure you get all your stuff sorted out because Germany's pretty tight at the moment I mean even the Dutch going over the border are getting fucking lifted if they don't yeah. have a, a flow test or something you know yeah or a guarantee of a vaccination or so I mean because it's holiday time over here now and uh, yeah people going through Germany is is a nightmare I mean my next door neighbor just came back from Italy and they wanted to go up through Germany and they weren't allowed in the country, so they had to come all the way up through the other way, you know? Wow. Yeah, I, I mean, none of us think it's going to be plain sailing, but um, I think we're a bit like, we need, you know, we just need to do it to get over the hump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But as much. long as you've got your tests and yeah. Exactly, yeah, we're, we're all fully vaxxed, so we'll have our COVID passports. But to your point, each each border will have its own rules so yeah yeah, yeah tests yeah. or paperwork and yeah you know because it's covid and there's brexit yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You know, it's just gonna it's just gonna be a ball lake all round but 
Um, yeah, the, I don't think the Brexit stuff it, it matters that much, to be honest. I mean, I've been doing my research into it, like I said, because I've managed a few bands in the past, mm. and I've seen people posting on the internet that you're only allowed to do three stops, and I mean, basically that's for tour tour buses, maybe, but not mm. for like five guy, four or five guys in a fucking van, you know. Mm. Unless your van is a registered tour bus, which I doubt it is. No, it won't be. It's plain sailing. So as long as you've got your, if you need a visa to go like somewhere like fucking Poland or whatever, which you've always needed a visa for, yeah, you know, then it's pretty plain sailing. There's a lot of, the, the main thing is going to be vaccination passports, I think. Yeah, no, agree. But you it might was... have to have a caveat. I'm not, I'm not 100 sure on that yet. Well, my, my view is this will be the most painful it'll be. Because it'll only get better, hopefully. Yeah, 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 for sure. So yeah. If we if we get through this, then it'll all, it'll all be plain sailing after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you've got a UK tour in December as well. We do. So this is um our headline to to promote the album, but obviously with everything that's gone on, I think I think we were good at doing making the right decision of we just like sod it, let let's plan for December mm. because so much can happen between now and then. Uh, there'll be a bit more confidence out there and um yeah we can just we can just approach it confidently and get ready yeah. and then also it's quite i don't know it's a bit uh, there might be a bit more anticipation i think the way it's been dragged out is actually quite nice um so ticket sales are going really well um we announced the hot damn we're going to support us right. okay which is pretty cool i'm really looking forward to playing with those guys um because you know we've I've we've played with them on the road in their different forms and guises with Amorettes and Tequila Mockingbird and um Aaron Buchanan um and his outfit. Um so to see what they come up with, you know, because I know they should have less covers, they should have more of their own stuff that they're gonna be road yeah. testing, which is pretty cool and exciting. Yeah. Um and also just sets a nice tone as well, because they're good fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you just I don't want a load of people just nodding slowly if we get on you you want a bit of oomph in the air in the room yeah, right yeah. so um they can provide that which would be awesome um but yeah tickets are on sale they're going well um i think i think nottingham and newcastle are about to sell out um but uh other areas are tricking along nicely as well so it's all good good, good. i think we've got one in bristol on the 10th so i'm gonna come over for that Nice, nice, good. Uh, yeah, one, one in Bristol. Because I, I know what you get say now about with John having to save his voice because from the 4th of December right up through to the 12th. Yeah, I think we got one night off. Pretty much back to back, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's those, yeah, it's those things that are going to push because we had, we had a couple of offers for some other, to, to tag some gigs on mm. to the end of them. Um and we actually thought, no, let's keep it to what we've got because there's an element of that. Yeah, um, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, just to see, because it's that horrible no man's land of, well, if we could afford a day off and then add three or four more shows, that, you know, that might be feasible. But actually, let's, you know, we've got a plan. Let's just let's just finish it. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 plan, and yeah. the year on a high. Um, and it's going well, so that should be cool. Because I think he'll learn a lot from that. Then going into next year and all the other stuff we've got planned. So, mm. have you got a new album in the works? Um, yes, but nothing, nothing to reveal. Obviously, and what what we yeah, mean yeah. by that is, um, we're we're actively now writing the album free material, and I'd say, um, we're a fair chunk of it done. Um, what what the, our approach and what we want to do, and what we do do, is. We'll we'll write a bunch of songs. Obviously, it's a good place to start. Yeah. Um, and we'll go and do pre-production with Clint, our producer, and that is basically we'll probably spend two days, um, and we'll do live demos of each song, and he'll record them nicely because then they're the blueprints for when. What makes it pre-prod is then they're the blueprints for when to go and record because yeah, the yeah. And label and mark off everything. Yeah. Um, but I think what what we want to do is we want to aim to do maybe about twenty songs in that process, and then it's the first. It's new for us because it's the first time we've got a label. So then we'll say, you know, here's twenty songs. We want to do an X song album. Let's argue the toss over which one to make it, and which one don't. 
yeah, you yeah. Know, get you know they'll they'll use the words like our oh, recommendation is yeah um, of course which is code for if we're going to pay for it <laughs> um but no no i'm sure it'd be fine you know, you know le- le- the label just wants some you know just wants to know we're at we're work we're doing our thing yeah, yeah, yeah working yeah. we're not just yeah. sitting waiting to be told so i think that's it's quite nice because i've really enjoyed the past few months again because prior to that it's all the kind of promo side and then we couldn't play live anyway because of covid even though last year was exciting so the album so it's like oh this this is the bit i enjoy yeah. Just writing new stuff, coming up with cool ideas and getting that buzz because um, we're starting to, like, the album's formed. Like, we've got the basis for 20 tracks. Oh, right, cool. If I'm honest, yeah, definitely three quarters of them are strong enough. Mm. Um, so it's going to be exciting to go through that process of then agreeing which ones make it and then make the bloody thing. But... Um, That'll all be next year. Who you know, timings, where, what, when, how is. Yeah, I mean, you've got to get out and promote this album first. So. Exactly, it's all yeah. irrelevant. It's I think you you don't you don't you shouldn't write songs off the back of how it's going to be made. You do it, yeah. still do it the organic way. Yeah, um, yeah, because that get, that gets the best results. Yeah. All right, then, mate. Well, I usually tell a story at the end of the show. I was just going to say you've got another single coming out as well. Let's oh, see. okay. Seen an episode on Facebook. <laughs> So, we do, we do. Yeah. So we, what we've done is, um, we it comes out on the eighth of September. So what's that? Four, three weeks, um, and there is a exclusive uh, WhatsApp group that we've uh, announced. And if you if you join that, you can find out all about it. Um, and we've basically been trickling teasers in there, and the guys in there actually got a sneak peek of the track and the video okay um, okay the other day um and then we're we're putting in loads of good background content like just us talking about the song how we record etc because it, it's a cover okay oh, okay so, yeah so i think at this stage because it's still quite early I, w- I won't tell you what it is because it hasn't been leaked oh it's i was gonna say what's it called like i didn't uh, yeah no I, I can't tell you just yet that's <laughs> Uh, it hasn't been leaked into the wider realm, but um, uh, try and join the group because then you can hear it. You can see yeah. what it's all about. Um, but it's the first time we've ever done a cover. Um, and it's pretty cool. It's good. really good. We, yeah, we pull it off. It's not a well-known free bird again, is it? It's not. I wish. <laughs> I wish. I've missed a trick. That's such a good idea. Um, the Yeah, we, we pull it off. Really proud. Really happy. It's good. It's going to be cool. Um, yeah, and... You know, we'll 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 no doubt play that till it's um, ground into the ground when we do all these European jollies and tours and all that jazz yeah, as well. Yeah. So I think the timing's good because especially if we're, we're in Europe, because they you know they love a bloody cover. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's where can you find the WhatsApp number then? Uh, on Facebook. our on our yeah on our I've uh, it. social channels. It's it's all of you? Yeah, I've shared it in the Chopsy lot. Oh right, okay. So we got our own little group as well. So I, I shared it. Might have been last night or the night before. Yeah, oh, I've seen it. So no, that's all right. See if you can dip in there. Mm. Um, and uh, I don't know if you if you can't see the history, just ask. Just okay. ask. The label look after it. They'll be able to sort you out. Cool. Um, but it should be good. Yeah. All right. Okay. Are you finished, Dave? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to edit that bit out now. Not that I edit. Fuck all. End it anyway. But. <laughs> So, because uh, you've got an Australian guy in your band, and I wasn't sure who was going to come on today. I, I knew you were coming on, Adam, but I wasn't sure if anyone else would join us. Sorry. Right. I've got a story from Australia. Go for it. And what it is, there was this woman, and her name is Tracy Noonan. Yeah. And she was out jogging in Beaconsfield, which is on Melbourne's out the southeast, I believe. And she was out jogging, and uh, she's running her little legs off. And then she fucking sees this kangaroo in the distance. And then this kangaroo gets a whiff of her and fucking chases her down and kicks her to the floor and starts scratching her. So and he must have been trying to get her clothes off, I think. So uh, she managed to fight him off, chits him around the head with a rock or whatever, <laughs> gets up, runs to, to a, a nearby house and uh, knocks on the door. And the, the people are kind enough to let her in, you know. And they say, oh, come on in and calm down and tell me what's going on because they thought she was being attacked. 
And she's oh, I've been attacked by a kangaroo. So uh, they say, all right, calm down, have a glass of water and give it 20 minutes. The kangaroo will fuck off and, you know, you can go on your way again. So this fucking Tracy, she says, all right, thanks for helping me and uh, thanks very much. So she goes back out, starts jogging again. And this fucking kangaroo is waiting around the corner, <laughs> right? <laughs> So she's she's off <laughs> running down the road and this fucking kangaroo is chasing her again. And uh, she manages to get home before the kangaroo grabs hold of her again. But um <laughs> the uh the, the local park rangers there well, they must be obviously they must watch the kangaroos if the kangaroos are in that that kind of numbers, especially if they're attacking people on the street, you know. Said it's probably a fucking perfume. It was after it caught the scent of a perfume. And uh, the, it was attracted by attracted to a perfume. That's why it attacked her. So it probably wanted a raper expect. But then you're thinking, who the fuck sprays perfume on to go for a jog? You know. And uh, she turned around and she said, "Well, I it was dark when I when I got out of bed, so I just reached for the the thing what I thought was a aerosol for a deodorant, but it turned out to be perfume. So she sprayed perfume on herself." And uh, that's why she ended up getting assaulted by a kangaroo because she mistook her, <laughs> her fucking deodorant for uh, oil. Oh, what do you call it? Perfume for fucking yeah. deodorant. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Bit of a mad one. Oh, she, she won't do that again in a hurry. Will no. <laughs> <laughs> there were photos of her on the back of all the fucking scrams on it. And stuff, yeah, so. God. Yeah, they're pretty pretty uh, lethal, those kangaroos, I think. Yeah. They're strong as well, mine, aren't they? With their back legs, they like smash you up, can't they, when they kick you and stuff? Well, they used to box them, didn't they, back in the day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The big ones, like. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Skippy's not going to fucking. Uh, well, he was going to leave, wasn't he? And he could talk. Well, Skippy was a rescue uh, kangaroo, wasn't he? <laughs> I don't know what kind of yeah. I think he could fly an helicopter and everything. <laughs> 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 All right, then, mate. It's good to talk to you. Brilliant. Uh, thank you both very much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, and when you've got something uh, to promote, I hope you come back on and tell us. And even if you haven't got anything to promote, you can always drop us a line and come back on anytime. Good stuff. Good stuff. And hopefully we'll get to see you. Hopefully I'll get to see you in Denbosch. Yeah, do it. And um, and Dave Bristol, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. All right, cool. Yeah. One else will throw you a Just Chops and T-shirt, I guess. That's it. Not that it's that cool. It's not as cool as a leather jacket. No, it's not as cool as the artwork either. That artwork. Oh, that's what I was going to ask you just then, actually. Oh, Could you yeah, said about the brewery. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, Beaver Town. The beer. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a guy called Nick. Um, oh, I forgot his surname. Nick L- 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 uh, It's the same artist who does Beaver yeah. Town. Nick oh, right, okay. Nick yeah. Dwyer? Nick Dwyer, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolute legend. Absolute pleasure yeah. to work with. It's really cool. It's absolutely brilliant. And we just, all we did was give them the album and said, do you, like, do something. And that's what came oh, out. right, okay. It's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, Who's doing great. the next one? Banksy. Yeah, it's quiet. <laughs> quiet. <laughs> if you could track him down, I mean, he's yeah. too busy destroying his own work, I think, at the moment. So Probably. Uh, yeah, never mind. Well, then, mate, like I said, nice to talk to you and hope to speak to you Two again. Steps. Have a good weekend. Yeah, and you. Thanks for coming Thank on, man. All the best. All right, wait. Ta-da, man. Yeah. Are you, leave, are you leaving? Or are you, are you, are you oh, no, leaving? no, I was thought you going to press stop or something. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I can press stop if you want. Hang on, man. <laughs> All right. All right, have you enjoyed that, Dave? That was good fun. Yeah, really good. All right, cool. I do like the band, so um, I look forward to watching them again in December. Yeah, yeah, they were pretty good. Yeah, really class. Okay. All right. And before we go then, I'll shout out for my other cousin. Go on then. Luke Archer, passing his GCSEs. So well done, Lukey boy. Well done, Luke. Yeah. Studying. And he's, I don't think he ever watches these, so it's a good reason for him to watch them now, isn't it? Better had, hasn't he? Aye. The cheeky <laughs> bastard. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right then, mate. All right, take it easy. Yeah, have a good one. Uh, I'll probably catch you up over the catch. No bollocks. Catch up with you over the weekend sometime. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> my mouth's all over the place today because I'm fucking. I I had to go for physio just before this, and I'm a bit fucking tired now. So that's all right. 
All right, mate. Rest now, yeah. Take it easy. All right, yeah, i got to go with my daughter and then uh, I can have chill out for the evening. All right, cool. Dinner's already made, so. Nice. Tidy. Nice. All right, then. Catch All you right, later. Thank you. Ta-ra. Ta-ra.